it's extraordinary how few people um, in, in, well, I think actually in large parts of the media, but certainly in the political classes, don't seem to be bothered by the idea that 700 people paid people traffickers to get on boats and arrived here illegally mm. in one day. In, indeed, Julia. Good morning to you. Yes, that's exactly the point. More importantly, in a way, apart from the media, there's just two stations that are two channels that are bothered about this. The point for me is that the leadership contenders for the next prime minister, frankly, they don't seem to be all that bothered either. They've, no. they've paid lip service to uh, the fact that, or oh, Rwanda, we're for it, we're going to pull out of the ECHR. Frankly, that means nothing. At the moment, the integrity of our border has been shot to pieces, and we should be ashamed of that, frankly. There's a lot that can be done. It isn't being done. A lot of it can be done with the French. The French don't want to play ball. The EU doesn't want to play ball. Ultimately, I think this problem is just going to grow and grow and grow. Yeah. And indeed, it's going to have an impact on all of us, the whole of Western Europe. Well, indeed, and this is the thing we're often told, we take far fewer people than uh, whether it's refugees, asylum seekers, uh, migrants than other European countries. Well, that's because they've got the Schengen area. Once you're into any part of Europe, you can pretty much go anywhere you want. The only time that stopped was uh, during the pandemic when borders were pretty much closed to pretty much everybody. Um, but, but that's the point. Is we chose never to be in the Schengen area. We chose to have that. Cause we also have the added bonus of being an island. But... We're constantly told that what this needs is somebody who can actually work with the French, work with the EU to deal with this. This idea that the problem is Boris Johnson, he, you know, Brexit, that Boris Johnson therefore wrecked our chances of working with the French on this. Do you think that a new leader, do you think that even someone who was a staunch Remainer, who, who someone like Keir Stum, if he was a leader of this country, God forbid, um, do you think that, oh, suddenly Macron and EU would suddenly go, oh, absolutely, we will certainly now deal with this issue? I fear that the political class, certain exceptions, I fully accept, but the political class, those in Westminster, don't really understand what this problem is. The only bit of comfort is that their constituents do. And I think that one thing that both Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss are finding out at the moment that there's a great deal of concern, not just about the channel, but about wider immigration, which is now running at record levels. And they've said absolutely nothing about that, not even paying lip service to the fact that they want to reduce it. I wrote to both of them a week ago and asked them to commit to lowering immigration. I haven't heard a dicky bird yet. But that's the interesting thing, and I, it has come up at some of these uh, hustings. It's interesting, again, when you think about, say, the, when we had that BBC debate, and sadly, I know the immigration was going to come up as an issue of the talk TV debate that was cut short when Kate McCann sadly uh, fainted. But um, certainly, you know, immigration is just not even on the agenda for the BBC debate or the Channel 4 debate. They were far more interested in talking about stuff that, frankly, didn't matter uh, at all uh, to, to most people. Um, and, and this is the thing. It, it's still considered to be something that oh, you shouldn't really talk about this. But this is a major concern for many many millions of people um, and as you say some of it's about illegal immigration like this and anyone who's not concerned about illegal immigration frankly needs their their head uh, sorted but legal immigration as well on a huge scale we are a very very tightly packed country we have a very high you know per head of population for, for the the amount of uh, uh, land we've got we've got a housing crisis an NHS crisis uh, let's face it we've got an education crisis as well um, most of our public sure. services are, 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 are fall, failing at the the seams but yeah let's have a few million more people i mean where are they going to live where are they going to go to school where, where are they going to go where, where are they go which doctor are they going to enroll with absolutely and, and housing is a major major issue as the scots have recently find out found out when the snp said yes we're going to take in 17 18 thousand of you they've had to put that on hold because they've run out of housing yeah. not so long ago a few weeks ago we heard the first results of the census and we heard that we ha added three and a half million people to our population in just 10 years. That is astounding. But more importantly, the vast majority of those, over 80%, were the result of immigration in one way or another. Immigrants coming here and children born to them not long after. 
that is not something that's sustainable. What do you think the government could do, or the new, the new uh, Prime Minister could realistically do on day one, September the 6th, when they become Prime Minister? What could they do to deal with this issue? Because, I mean, don't we look, the Rwanda policy hasn't come into force yet, in, really, because we haven't, we're waiting for a court decision on that. And if it ever does Absolutely. come into force, I think a lot of us would be quite surprised. But what could they do? The, the very first thing that could be done and done very easily is that the points-based system which they introduced uh, 18 months ago, beginning of 20, 2021, that could be tightened up. Instead of tightening it, they actually loosened the system that was there before. That has led to thousands of people coming here who might not have qualified. Yeah. That's one thing. With regards to illegal immigration, well, the first thing that must happen is that all those who arrive here, if we can't send them back, we detain them until we can move them, send them back to the countries of origin. Those two oh. things can happen under existing legislation. Okay, I'm going to say, I'm, I don't quite sure we've got the prison space for a lot of these people, but there we are in the detention centre space. Art oh, Mehmet, always good to talk to you, Chairman of Migration Watch. Thank you. Um